Yes, it's the 34th running of the world's biggest motor race in terms of competitors. 250 cars will start in front of 200,000 plus fans who are packed around the Nürburgring. And yes, this race is on the most magnificent circuit in motor racing, the Nordschleife. 25.378 kilometers. And the fans, they're certainly ready to party. Painting on the track, the names of some of the drivers they hope will win. This should be a battle between Porsche and Dodge Viper. No factory BMWs here this year. But there is indeed a factory Maserati team and drivers from as far afield as Australia. So, Germany currently consumed, of course, by the World Cup, but it certainly hasn't stopped all the interest here. Audi do not have an official entry this year. People having fun, as you can see. But there are classes for alternative fuel cars and lots of diesel machines, some cars running on bioethanol. And as we said, a cast of well-known drivers, and one of them from Holland is Patrick Huysman, who always enjoys this race. The fans here are just so passionate. They seem to be more passionate here than, than any other circuit. And uh, of course, they're very close to the track. You can feel them right up close as a driver. The only problem comes in the evening. You can smell the barbecues at the side of the track and you uh, suddenly fancy a great big steak. It's a totally unique atmosphere. As part of the week leading up to this, you have the out and hour racing days, lots of fun down in the town, which of course is very close to the circuit. Michael Bartle says, I've heard some fans arrived here last Saturday and Sunday, set up their tents and their camping gear, and that's absolutely unique in Germany. You can justifiably say this is the biggest motor racing event in the world with more participants and more cars. Taking part in this 24-hour race is always something very special. You can't compare it with anything else. And certainly the fans very happy with all the activities down in Adenau. Louis Altson's comment, I'm often travelling with the uh, Formula One tracks and it's all very different. The fans aren't allowed to go anywhere at all. That's why I like this event so much. The public can get right up close. Well, they're certainly up close here. And the drivers waving to the fans down there in Adenau. They're getting ready up on the start line for the formation lap. Over 200 cars. They start in waves and on pole position. They've been trying to win this race for 25 years. Olaf Manthley Racing, and he has amassed a superb lineup of drivers. Well, who will be the joker in the pack? Maybe it will be Dula Motorsports with their BMW, their Red Bull back car, the veteran Austrian Dieter Questra amongst the drivers in that car. But also at the wheel of the 60 machine, which qualified in ninth place, Hans Joachim Stuck, who won this race for the first time in 1970. There he is, and won it again in 2005. The more chaos, the better, says Hans. My favorite would be for it to rain for the full 24 hours. That will even out the performances. Some new electronics and technical improvements to the engine of the Dodge Viper. 500 brake horsepower, and now with a sequential gearbox. But of course, one problem for this car is its high fuel consumption. After technical problems in 2005, Land Motorsport aren't taking any risks as far as their strategy is concerned. Reliability and durability are what they are looking for. Timo Scheider amongst the drivers in that Bill Stein Porsche saying here, well, we could perhaps try for pole position, but I don't think that's what counts in 24-hour races. Everyone knows with so many cars on the Nordschleife, overtaking is going to be key. Staying power is also vital for the Altsum Porsche, as this has been clearly lacking in the past. They are entering the race without their four-wheel drive or turbo power that they've used before. They have a new GT3. 
Driver Uelzen saying we have a fairly conservative build this time. Unlike many, we have gone for a normal gear shift rather than sequential. It may require a little more time and effort, but I think over the distance it's going to be a good choice. So most pundits reckoning that the cards will be played in favour of either Manthe Racing with their Porsche with that lineup of factory Porsche drivers, or indeed the Altsum brothers with their Porsche GT3. Both cars very quick. Here we go, off for the start of the 24 hours. And unlike previous years, tremendous weather here, very hot indeed. And it is the uh, Manthe Racing Porsche that goes into the lead. Lucas Lure starting that car, shares it with Timo Bernard, Mike Rockefeller, and Marcel Tiemann. And certainly chasing hard the Alsen Racing machine of brothers Jürgen and Uwe Alsen. And a Klaus Ludwig, of course, a veteran DTM racer and GT racer, touring car racer. And uh, also in that lineup, a man currently racing in the DTM, Christian Act. But here we are, the uh, first run around this uh, Nürburgring. And uh, a Lamborghini well up as well. Quite a lot of uh, competitors coming over from Australia this year, but uh, look at these two breaking away. The 28 car and the two car. And look out for the uh, Zach Speed Viper, of course, winner in uh, 01 and 02, as well as back in 1999. And this is the second wave of cars off because there are so many cars here. They start in waves and a whole group of BMWs. But the Zach Speed car, or one of the two Zach Speed entries, actually uh, starting in uh, second place, but uh, passed uh, on this uh, opening lap by the uh, Altsen uh, Porsche. And uh, just think about this. There are probably upwards of 1,000 competitors in this race. That must be some sort of record. But problems already for the Lamborghini, the number four car, Peter Obendorfer amongst the uh, drivers there, and Herman Tilke, of course, the uh, famous uh, circuit designer, and uh, straight into the garage, so a very big disappointment. So the Lamborghini had been super fast in practice, looking very impressive. Now we can hear from Peter Obendorfer. Yeah, we're really happy to be taking part. We've done so well with what is a, a very, very new car. Uh, now we've got uh, a reoccurrence of the alternator problems that we had in practice, so we've got to look into it. But uh, having said that, this is more of a, a test for us. How I think we have shown that the Lamborghini Gallardo is both a production car and racing vehicle. Well, it all looks a, a bit serious down there with the uh, Lambo. But here from the uh, helicopter camera, just uh, look at the action. Still uh, the two uh, Porsches in front going round the uh, carousel. What a fantastic shot of that uh, bank corner. And also uh, amongst the front runners, the uh, Land Motorsport Porsche of uh, Mark Cap. Uh, Bassing, uh, Patrick uh, Simon, Timo uh, Scheider, and uh, Frank Stippler, and that's a very strong lineup of drivers. And here the Viper trying to find a way through the uh, Zach Speed car and uh, taking to the uh, grass there. This is one of the problems always at this uh, Nurburgring 24 hour race. It is one of traffic. There is the Maserati going through in the uh, familiar colours of uh, the Vitaphone team, which of course has been put together by Michael Bartles, one time at Lotus Grand Prix driver. That's the uh, number seven machine. And uh, that qualified uh, up in the top 10 and is certainly looking very racy indeed. And the uh, number 99 car going for a wild ride and hits the barrier hard. And uh, oh, steam coming up. And that's the, one of the new Cayman RSs and uh, well, I'm not sure that will go very far indeed. Now, here's a very interesting car indeed. The uh, number eight, Aston Martin, and one of the drivers of that car is indeed the uh, chief executive officer of Aston Martin. Finally, the Lamborghini goes back into the race. So they've sorted that out. Now we can go on board with the uh, Land Motorsport uh, Porsche. And the uh, land car running right up in the uh, top 
top uh, five and being passed there. That's a genuine pass for uh, a top five position by the uh, Viper, driven by this year by Peter Zakowski, who's led this squad to their three previous victories. Uh, Sasha beat Patrick Huisman and Hans Peter Hooper Nieder, the uh, quartet of drivers in that machine. And just look at all that graffiti over the racetrack. V10 power of the uh, Viper. But uh, the Land Motorsport right up his uh, bumper there. The uh, two cars battling this out. This is very interesting to go on board with the number 10 machine, the uh, Scuderia Augsburg uh, BMW. Here's the car driven by Lucas Lure, Timo Bernard, Mike Rockefeller, and uh, Marcel Tiemann. There is uh, Lucas Lure. And uh, he climbs out of the car after a great first stint. And indeed, in the closing stages of that uh, stint, uh, it started to uh, pull away from uh, his arch rival in the uh, Altson uh, car. It's the Viper popping past the uh, BMW here. And the number 10 car after the pit stop we just saw back in the race. Christian Menzel sharing that with uh, Dennis Rostek, Oliver Kainz and Johannes Schneid. And they are having a very good run indeed. Qualified well inside the top 10. So uh, this is probably the fastest, or one of the two fastest BMWs in the race. But just look at the speed of this yellow and green car. Olaf Manthley Racing. 25 years as a driver and then as an entrant, Olaf Manthley with the fine moustache, been trying to win this race. And we go on board now with the, the Manthe car. Down the long, long straight, heading towards the uh, pits. Just the other side of the fence, the uh, famous Dotingaho pub. And the section translated into English called the uh, Foxhole. And certainly this 28 car has the speed. Lucas Lowe, of course, been racing uh, in the American Le Mans series in the uh, new uh, Porsche prototype, where it recently just had his first victory. And the flag marshal's having to work very hard here. A lot of Hondas in this race, all having their own private uh, class battles, of course. But a lot of Alfa Romeo diesels, and here we have more pit stop activity. And the Bill Stein backed number 36 car coming in. The Land Motorsport uh, prepared car of Mark Bessing, Patrick Simon, Timo Scheider, of course, a DTM regular competitor, and uh, Frank Stipper, also a DTM contender. And uh, Land Motorsport certainly have the potential to win this one. There, the car actually having a stop go penalty. I think that was for speeding in the pit lane earlier. Incidentally, the Outson brothers have not run such a uh, highly tuned car this year, and indeed they decided to run with a H-pattern gearbox. I just think it would be more reliable than the uh, sequential, which uh, the Manthe car is running. And uh, look at this with the uh, Viper all mixed up in this uh, struggle. And that caption just telling us that the uh, fastest lap thus far of the uh, leading Porsche, some uh, six seconds quicker than that of the uh, American muscle car, the red Viper of uh, Peter Sikowski. They're getting a nice tan there and also enjoying the action. As we go back on uh, board with that uh, Manfred Racing. This race starting at uh, three o'clock. And of course, we'll go through the night which here in Germany at this time of the year is uh, quite short. Just about five hours of uh, darkness. And here is uh, the current positions. And indeed, so close between the two leading Porsches, just 14.5 seconds. And then behind them, the uh, best of the uh, Vipers, another 16 seconds behind. And then on the same minute, the uh, car driven by Frank Stipperen and the second of the Vipers and then the best of the BMWs. 
In uh, seventh place, the uh, Porsche 997 of that group there, including Dieter Schorstein, a uh, veteran driver, Porsche 8. And in ninth place, uh, Dieter Questers, BMW, with hands stuck at the wheel. And, of course, a winner last year. And then in tenth place, a Porsche. So, right at the front after a couple of hours, the two Porsches absolutely neck and neck, and the Viper keeping them honest. What a tremendous start to this race, but such a long way to go. And a great helicopter shots here. At the front, of course, a very professional business, but uh, further down the field, some boys having some fun. Just look at this. And Volker Stajcek, one of the drivers there, the uh, former boss of Opel Motorsport. Of course, Opel winding up their DTM programme at the end of 2005. Uh, great disappointment in that decision. Here's some of the marks taking part in the race this year. Some of the nationalities too. And there's that splendid Aston Martin V8 Vantage amongst the driving list. The boss of Aston, Dr Ulrich Betts, and he's certainly enjoying himself in a car which is being engineered by Graham Humphreys. Of course, uh, there's a lot of fiction around Aston Martin from uh, the James Bond films. Uh, we sort of think about it as 007, but unfortunately here we, uh, we got the number eight. Of course, uh, Aston Martin uh, is uh, racing successfully at uh, the American Le Mans series and uh, Le Mans. But we wanted to come here with the Vantage and show off this car. It's... Uh, Virtually standard, just has safety equipment, says uh, Dr. Betts, and great to see him uh, getting the crash helmet on. Back with the uh, Lamborghini. Now, here's a car you may not have seen before. It's the Weisman. It has a BMW V8 engine in it, and it's produced in small numbers in the German town of Dulman. Plenty of Porsches here. And uh, there is that uh, venerable Opal uh, Manta, car number 130. 21 in trouble there. And as ever, lots of Japanese competitors coming to this race. And again, a show of the many nationalities who have travelled to uh, take part here. The, the only problem is you cannot explain it to anybody unless they are here. If they come and see it, they, they will understand and they will always come back and it's the same what I did. Not as a spectator, but, but as a driver. And I think I will continue to come here because uh, I enjoy very much the atmosphere and the racing here also. Yeah, Jabba, one of the great characters from uh, Middle East motorsport, been around for many years and a very special 24-hour. Is it a dressing gown? Yeah, some of the scenes in the pits here at the Nürburgring, 24 hours. But let's get back to the racetrack and this uh, epic duel between the uh, two Porsches and, of course, the uh, Red Viper, which is slowing here. So, problems for the Viper. See down from the uh, helicopter. The driver's certainly been uh, suffering with huge cockpit temperatures in that car and problems with the pedal box so they could uh, hardly put their feet onto the pedals but now i think there's uh, another kind of uh, brake situation with this car and so maybe the viper challenge is starting to weigh just uh, limping in here and uh, more spins down there but uh, they sort themselves out rather lurid Purple machine, and into the pits comes the Viper. And uh, the uh, Sack Speed boys, of course, in their time, built their own Formula One car. And uh, problem, I think, with the left front wheel, the mechanic there signaling uh, there could be a problem. And certainly uh, problems uh, getting the uh, this nut on properly. And all the time, the... Uh, Viper losing time. Here's Patrick Huisman, who was driving the car when it came into the pits with this problem. 
Well, to start with, it felt like a flat tire. On the approach to the footplats uh, corner, the car went straight ahead. On landing, I almost spun out. First, I thought it was a flat on the right front, uh, then the left front. But the tire didn't actually go down during that lap, and I realized it must be something else. It's quite likely the front left suspension is broken, as it didn't give any problems driving on the straight, only on right hand bends. After I turned in, I was pushed straight again, so something must have broken off on the left front of the car. And indeed, that certainly seems to be the case, and they're still trying to, still trying to get that left front wheel off. Well, let's see what they do now. The, uh, the other Viper from the team in there, the 33 car, with the uh, gentleman drivers in it, and that's still uh, well up the field. And one of those drivers, some 63 years old. And here the uh, number 60 uh, Red Bull uh, dollar prepared uh, BMW. And Stuck, of course, uh, at the wheel of that, the man who won the first ever race here. And his son is competing today. And I know that's made uh, Hans very proud indeed. His son running in a little BMW with a diesel engine, but way up the field, having a great run. And indeed, uh, could well score a victory in the diesel class if he can keep going all night. Now, what's going on here? This is the uh, lead car now, then, just trying to find a way past the uh, 188 car, which uh, really should have been using its mirrors and uh, taking to the grass. Again, as we said before, this is one of the hazards of this 24-hour race. And now we've got, oh, big into the barriers. A huge, huge crash by the 63 machine in the American colour scheme. That's the Kellner Motorsport car. And uh, Forrest Barber, I think, at the wheel there from America. But here's another incident. This is the 255 car, the Wayne Moore, Boris O'Reilly, Heiner Imig, Volkswagen uh, Golf TDI. And meanwhile, in the background, the number seven Maserati being towed in. So, uh, disaster for them. It's all happening here at the Nürburgring. Here's the current position. And it's the uh, 28 Porsche now in front of the 36 Porsche. And then the number two Porsche. And uh, there we are cycling through the field. And I think that uh, car we just saw being towed in was the number seven machine. So that will slip off the uh, list. Well, now this race seems to have settled down into a battle between the three Porsches at the front of the Land Motorsport car, currently going into uh, second place. And the Dieter Cuesta hand stuck BMW right up in fifth place, having a great run. And there we see the uh, rest of the top ten on our uh, rolling uh, screen there. Into the pits then, the uh, Land Racing car. Now in second place, just look at the urgency in these mechanics. So a big battle going on for second place, but uh, meanwhile, the uh, leading car seems to have pulled away a little bit uh, from the other two Porsches. And of course, uh, problems for the Viper we uh, charted earlier. Now here's Timo Scheider, who's just got out of the land Porsche. Oh, it's very tough out there. Uh, seemed to be there was lots of roadworks on the track. It was uh, very, very difficult. We had the setting sun, which was very low in my eyes. And uh, some corners, some very low visibility. And uh, lots of accidents out there at the moment. So it really was very difficult. So the Land uh, Porsche back in the race, though, now with uh, Frank Stippler at the wheel, having suffered those uh, tyre problems, uh, mainly with the left-hand uh, rear, which has uh, held it back. But Porsche running so strong in this race, where in the past they haven't had that much success. And uh, there again, uh, problems with the uh, Land Porsche and its uh, left-hand uh, rear wheel. And this is hurting their chances very badly indeed. Now they've got the raffle gun ready. And you can hear the urgency in their voices. They have to push the car back so it can get out of the pits. The pits can get so crowded here at the Nürburgring with some 250 cars in the race. And finally exiting the pits there. Lights on now. Indeed. 
evening approaches here on the Nordschleifer. Now here's a very important car, the 263 machine. This is a BMW 120 diesel. This is the one with Hans Stuck's son aboard, also sharing with the uh, endurance expert Claudia Hertgen and Torsten Schubert, Mark Henrique. And this car is right up in 21st place and leading the diesel category. So a great run for Hans Duck's young son. There is the BMW, the uh, number 26 car. Last year, of course, this race dominated by the factory BMWs. It's all private cars this year. And the uh, 26 machine driven by Michael Bader, Tobias Hagenmeyer, Ralph Schall and Marcus Gedrich. Meanwhile, we're back with the uh, number 12 car, the Lambo Racing entry. And uh, that car driven by uh, Stephen uh, Rossler, Andreas Kitzerau and George uh, Sibermeyer. Sibermeyer from Austria. There's the 265, the uh, Alpha 147 Cup car in uh, 165th place. Meanwhile, look at this, still uh, charting the progress of the uh, Red Bull BMW and uh, coming under attack here from the uh, Porsche, the number two Alson Brothers car. And there's a famous face in the crowd, Bert Schneider, multi-DTM champion, watching on, certainly seems to be enjoying it. Already, of course, had a victory uh, this season in the DTM, a Mercedes-Benz driver. And at the uh, 33 Dodge Viper now, some three laps down. That's the second of the uh, Zack Speed entries, uh, a slightly older car. Into the pits, the uh, 177 Honda Civic Sport. And uh, just one of many Hondas in this race. Always a very popular car to take part in the Nürburgring. And obviously some problems under bonnet, checking the oil. And the uh, team going to work here. Bonnet comes down. Meanwhile, still at the front, a little bit of poor poison going on from the uh, leading 28 car. It seems to be running absolutely like clockwork. And uh, Lucas Lure and Mike Rockefeller, of course, very well known in America, where they race regularly. And here is that lead uh, Viper which uh, dropped down the field, the uh, red Zack Speed car, Peter Zakowski, son of the founder of uh, Zack Speed, Eric Zakowski. And there's that uh, Lamborghini Gallardo GTR again. And he's now seven laps down in 81st place. Now on board with the uh, Aston Martin. Graham Humphreys, who was the man who designed the car, the BMW, which won Lamar a few years ago has been involved with this project. He's uh, team managing it for uh, Dr. Betts. And certainly the Aston seem to have plenty of speed, a real luxury car here around the Nürburgring. That's one of the delights of this race, is all the many different sorts of cars you see in it. And back with the old uh, Opel uh, Manta, running in a fantastic 47th position. Uh, Volker Steichek, of course, the man who masterminded a lot of uh, Opal success, including their victory here in 2003 when uh, Manfred Reuter, Timo Scheider and Marcel Thiemann won in an Astra V8 Coupe, an ex-DTM uh, car. And uh, Marcel Thiemann also uh, a member of the team which won in 1999 in the, uh, the Viper. And now there's a very interesting entry indeed, the Autosportive Subaru Impreza with some backing with from Subaru and the start of a new endurance uh, racing program. I know George Donaldson from uh, STI is here, but a number of problems with drive shafts uh, have been hampering this car. And amongst the uh, drivers, Chris Atkinson, the uh, Subaru World uh, Rally Championship uh, team driver, and indeed Phil Bennett from the UK, 
who holds the record for a road car around the uh, Nordschleife at that, of course, in a radical. Well, time to take a little bit of sleep, a little bit of rest. And the fires are going, the uh, barbecues are uh, certainly uh, well stoked up. And the Manthe Racing Porsche continues to lead here. So after those early skirmishes with the Altson car, and of course the Land car getting also involved, Manthe Racing seems to have pulled away with this uh, superb uh, list of four drivers. And uh, Mike Rockefeller, of course, uh, I think at the wheel now, a real character. Made himself very popular in the United States. So we're heading towards the uh, half distance mark in this uh, motor race. This extraordinary race with over 200 competitors. This huge crowd. And uh, held on the same day as the Le Mans 24 hours. It's just about to celebrate its 79th birthday, in fact. As day breaks, it will be the exact day 79 years ago that this uh, circuit first uh, saw racing and what titanic struggles it's seen over the years but now you see one lap separating the first and second place Porsches and the two uh, Dodge Vipers now the uh, amateur car running in front of the professional car but both four laps down so some will take some sleep some will party but for those racing the battle continues, the lights will arc through the night. But one man not still racing, sadly, Hans Joachim Stuck in the BMW M3 of Dula Motorsport. Shortly after midnight, well, Hans was out. There was an accident and the quartet of Cuesta, Werner, Deutken and Stuck were history. So Hans packing his bags there in the Red Bull motorhome and Heading off, it wasn't to be in 2006. Naturally, we're delighted that nothing really serious happened. Um, we came round and there was a car sitting on the apex of a bend, uh, so there was nothing we could do except uh, hit the car. So uh, sadly, we're out. And a short while after that, another of the favourites pushed away into the dead car park. Peter Sikowski, very disappointed, but the Viper had been in a succession of problems. This is Harold Rettig of the team. The Red Viper is somewhat damaged. We have a serious exhaust problem. There are a few things on the car we could repair or replace, but uh, this wasn't planned. Uh, now we are concentrating all our efforts on our weaker car, the number 33, but this car is very well placed in the race, and I think uh, when everything is over, we should get a top 10 finish with our, our amateur drivers, so let's hope so. So, the weight of the uh, Dodge Challenge now resting on the uh, gentleman, the crew in the 33 car, including Werner Moore, at 63 years old. Oh, now we're hearing from uh, Frank Stippler. Well, we had a few uh, problems with loose bolts in the drivetrain. Uh, we've kept coming to tighten those. I have to say the boys have done a very good job. However, it has slowed us down for a couple of laps, and uh, that's made things uh, very difficult for us in the order. Uh, we've tried to hang on to the people at the front, but we don't want to take too many risks. We have a two-lap gap between us, the car in front of us, and the car behind, so we'll see what happens, says uh, Frank Stippler. Similar situation uh, at the Altson team in second place, uh, two laps uh, between them and the front-running car, and the third-place car, Frank Stippler, and the boys, two laps behind them. So the Altson. Oh, the Manthe car is simply too fast. It goes uh, very quickly indeed. Uh, if we try to push any harder, we'd uh, risk losing control. For the moment, we just want to uh, keep our position. Uh, it's almost halfway now, so still 12 hours driving ahead. Uh, that's a very long time, and, uh, well, anything could happen yet. But what about the uh, lead car, the uh, Earl of Manthe team? Certainly been going very well, had no problems at all. And of course, with some very quick drivers at the wheel. The team boss, 
is Olaf Manthe. I said it was uh, 25 years he's been trying to uh, win this race as a team and driver. It's actually a bit longer than that. Well, things went uh, very well last year at this time, but uh, last year at 7 o'clock on Sunday morning, uh, everything changed. So we'll have to wait and see if we can get that far. And hopefully this year the car is going to go uh, to the very finish of the race. But uh, I'm just keeping my fingers crossed. Well, one thing is certain, Manthe will need some nerves of steel. There he is on the radio to his drivers. The car pulls out the pits again, another routine stop, and the light starting to come back up. It's almost sunrise. Finally, the light does come up. There is the Schlosch, which overlooks the wonderful Nürburgring, and there, as the moon disappears, Still, Porsche 123, and then that 33 Viper in fourth place. And uh, plenty of other Porsches in the top 10, but just look at that 120D BMW in eighth place now. Tremendous performance. There's the 33 Viper with the fuel coming out of it. Possibly overfueled, but uh, that's obviously going to hamper its progress a little bit. And uh, through the night, the Mantle Porsches just kept going around like clockwork. No chance for the Altson team to uh, close up. 101 laps in the book for the number 28 car leading here. And just look at the speed. After its earlier problems with tyres, the uh, Land Porsche in uh, third place. There it is, the blue and yellow car. On board with the Land Motorsport Bill Stein back car. Diving down, away from the pitch down onto the wonderful Nordschleifer. Very fast section, this. But uh, then a problem here, 28 car coming in with a flat left puncture. Fortunately, the puncture happened at the uh, Dotinger Ho, quite uh, close to the end of the lap. Le Bernard, Rockenfeller and team and the four drivers, all top professionals. Marcel Thiemann, of course, for a while with Mercedes-Benz. All the other three regular racers in the American Le Mans series. But a little drama for them here. Meanwhile, the team just uh, relaxing in the garage area. And uh, we go back on board with a 36 Land Motorsport car in third place. Last year, of course, we saw the swan song for the wonderful BMW uh, M3 V8, the GTR machine. The car's now uh, confined to a museum. Pit stop then for Claudia Hurtgen in the uh, 258 car leading the diesel category. Little BMW we haven't seen at racing before. And uh, in fact, it's Johannes Stuck, uh, the son of Hans Jörgen Stuck, climbing out. Well, I think we're now in sixth place. The uh, number 11 car, which was in front of us, I've just seen it stopped at the carousel. And they only had one lap on us. So, uh, well, this is uh, some of the best racing I've ever experienced. So the uh, little BMW really going sensationally well. Not that fast, but uh, been running like clockwork and some very good drivers at the wheel. Claudia Hurtgen, of course, hugely experienced around the Nürburgring. On board now with the uh, 102 car. And let's check out the uh, standings then after some 125 laps. Uh, it is still a Porsche 123 as the little Audi A3 goes through with a big wing on the back. And uh, no changes there. The three Porsches, then the Dodge uh, Viper, and then the uh, Belgian Porsche in fifth place. Then that BMW confirmed in sixth. Then the Adams Door Henrique Vogler BMW. And then uh, three more Porsches out on the track. Big incident here, the uh, Porsche 996. 
GT Cup car of uh, Francesco Ciani. Lucky not to have done more damage, really, but clanging it along the Armco barrier. And that's the end of him. But sadly, also out one of the front runners, the Land Porsche. Just two and a half hours before the end of the race, this happened. Look at the fire at the back. Mark Basing at the wheel, and I think uh, there's still flames coming out. He tried to make it back to the pits, had flames coming out of the car, but uh, finally stopped there sensibly at the uh, marshal's post. So, a sad end to the Land Porsche. And there is uh, Mark Basing. Very disappointed. Uh, so close to the end of the race. I didn't realise the car was on fire because I didn't have a radio link to the pits. So we drove the last lap without radio because something wasn't working. I, I was all on my own. I only knew one thing, and that it was a 24-hour race, and you drive as long as the wheels will turn. I tried to do that even though it was very slow. Of course, I saw the oil pressure was going down. And then I realised the car was on fire. But what could I do? If you stop anywhere on the track, it's all over. I'm just, just trying to make it back and uh, to try and save the car. But it's a, a massive disappointment for us. Well, I'll say that again. Meanwhile, the uh, Zack Speed uh, Viper, their second car in third place. So, despite the retirement of their red car, still looking for a good result here. And what about the lads from the uh, VIP pet food sponsorship from Australia? They've moved up to eighth place overall. A long trip. They've competed in the past in the Bathurst 24, and they're certainly excited about uh, their race here. Uh, we drove this race to uh, prove to the world that we are the fastest pet food makers in the world. And we come to the best race in the world, we drive the best cars in the world, and that's what we're here to do, to show the, show the world that we're the best and fastest pet food makers in the world. Yes, congratulations to them coming that huge distance to do so well here. Well, these are the scenes of the uh, final closing lap. No problems at all for the Manthe Porsche there, just uh, at the front of our picture, heading home for a famous victory. And the man who prepared the car, Olaf Manthe, been trying to win this race in total for some 32 years. Finally doing it here. There, a nice shot from the cockpit here. The car's all coming into the stadium section and uh, wait for the chequered flag to go out to uh, a superb driver lineup. Hardly put a foot wrong, just that one puncture and victory to the Matthew Racing at Porsche. And it'll be Porsche also in uh, second place. Jürgen Altson's Porsche gave a good fight. Just go on board there briefly in the Manthe car. Celebrations all around, of course, down in the pits. And the Altson car finishing second, just didn't have the pace of the Manthe car, but a very good performance from them. And there are the drivers. The thumbs up from them. And let's check out the results. Those uh, two Porsches at the front, then the Dodge Viper, then the uh, Belgian-driven Porsche. Fantastic fifth place for Hans Stuck. Son and Claudia Hurtgen and their two teammates. And uh, you see the uh, rest of the field, very good performance there from that uh, Opel Astra from uh, Walker Strychek, who's actually driving in two different cars, driving also the old Manta. And there on the podium then, the winners, the team put together by Olaf Manthe. Well, it's very difficult to describe how I feel. Um, it feels as if I've driven through a quarry in a massive truck with a huge family house on board, and I can finally unload it. I suppose it'll all sink in in a few days' time. My team and I have worked so many years for this, and it's finally happened for us. Yes, it's just the best thing that's uh, ever happened to our team. So the bubbly sprays up on the uh, podium, an excellent uh, Nürburgring 24 hours, superb weather and a great victory for Porsche.